all about uh, sloganeering. I know slogans don't change a country, but if you're going to do advocacy, find a way that whatever you're communicating, that there's a buying. Can they at least have some degree of justice? I have used uh, capacity building for the very, very people who we initially thought are so apathetic, are so voiceless. Having worked a lot in East Africa over the years, when I came to Kenya, I think it really strikes us what a, uh, a country of contradictions, I guess is the word that I would use to describe it. When it comes to comparing Kenya with other countries in the East Africa region, we certainly have the most active uh, and free press and media. So I really, uh, I, I want to stop talking because I'd love to hear more from, from Boniface and the other speakers about what they're trying to do in Kenya to, uh, to address these issues. I started my journey back and I started doing activism. So after post-election violence, I was traumatized, I was a bit disturbed man and I thought, what could I do? And I gathered friends in my house and for six months we met in my house. We would meet and discuss what we do. And he said, let's go and help the president. Maybe we'll get attention. And he's going to listen to us. But when the day came, I went to the stadium. When I stood up, I was alone. They didn't show up. And the lesson was that we're not really seeing the same vision of what you're trying to do. But if you're going to do advocacy, find a way that whatever you're communicating, that there's a buy-in. And how do you get the buy-in? By listening to people. So get local, work with local people, find that thing that community that can actually help you tell your story. Because what you guys do, it's very good projects, but for you to be able to fundraise more and get more supporters and people get to know what you need to do, you need to do propaganda. So you have to think in a propaganda way. And propaganda is not a bad word. You're just propagating what you're trying to do. Thank you. When I was growing up, we witnessed a lot of violence, as, as she said. Next to our house was this man who had married a baby, and every day she was battered. So one day, when this guy was doing the, the usual, he always locked the door. So my brother uh, broke the door and got in, and I followed. And uh, of course, my brother punched the bugger <laughs> properly. And then this guy was arrested, never mind that he didn't last more than three days in the police cells. He was arrested and released after three days. But when he was released, he came and <coughs> gave us a, a, a threat. And a day after, my brother was murdered. But later in time, I decided it's high time I challenged the status quo. My long journey in campaigns has taught me that uh, the various things that we must put in our toolboxes as campaigners. And the first thing is I campaign because I would like to influence uh, change in my perspectives. My other uh, tool in my box is to make sure that I initiate processes that will enable people recreate their own histories. Uh, currently I'm working on housing rights and the big elephant in the room in our, in, in our place has been forced evictions. They happen day in, day out. I'd like to stop there by saying, I challenge all of us to make this campaign our problem. Make every one of us, including Naomi here, feel guilty for this plight of the children. Thank you very much. About two years ago, a friend of mine, she was an intern at the time, just straight out of uh, campus. And her mother, who had been bedridden and actually was in a wheelchair at the time, needed to do some surgery. It would cost about $2,000. She was on Twitter at the time and Facebook. And so she thought, if these guys are really my friends, can they help me raise that money? And in a span of about two and a half weeks, she had raised $2,300. One of the most popular campaigns in Kenya and which has been, um, has, it has, has several iterations, it's called Mpango Wakando. The reason why it's become so popular is because kids are talking about it, um, it's on popular radio shows, it's on social media, it's been spoofed, 
seven, eight, nine different times. And so people do get the message. About a month or two ago, a young girl, 16 years old, in Busia, that's towards in the western part of the country, close to the border with Uganda, she was raped. They did a protest a few days ago. And all of these stories I've shared have one thing in common, which is they go to our emotion. And all these campaigns, even though some of those that started them didn't even realize they were campaigns, somebody just started justice for Liz because as a parent, I personally feel that this is hugely, hugely distasteful that we live in a society that would allow this to happen. If you can get a solid social media campaign going, the traditional media will follow. I think that's it. I'm done. I actually wanted to make a comment. I think we have to have people feeling responsible, but not uh, guilty, because guilty can paralyze people. The point is just creating moral discomfort and not uh, feeling guilty, really. Well, whether we want to say guilty or responsible, whichever, the truth is that we work in, some Nigeria in Nigeria works likely in the parts of the country, in the northwest and the northeast, where two or three years ago when I was facilitating a meeting, some of the uh, traditional religious leaders who were there told me that if a woman dies in labor, he goes straight to heaven. Now, to make a set of people like that feel guilty or responsible for high mortality is a big challenge. And that is one of the various challenges that we have had to face in our campaign and advocacy. So how do you make them feel guilty or feel responsible enough to be able to take on the challenge? Where there is proper awareness creation, we will see one way or the other we are affected. Of course, there is, second, there is primary affectees, then there is secondary. But one way or the other, uh, we are all affected by each and everything that happens. I couldn't let you leave without asking if you can help me with my job um, and some of our advocacy that we're trying to do here in Kenya it's on how we, I say, get the book, turn the story into a long-term campaign, how do we really mobilize Kenyan people in the public opinion to, to see that this is uh, um, you know, an important story. As a journalist, we're always asking ourselves, so what? And if you can answer convincing so what, it's a better story. Because we can sell it to our editors and we can sell it to the viewers better than if, okay, it does sound good, nice and fluffy, but it won't quite, it doesn't have a serious hook. And the better you can find those hooks, the better. And the easier for you to get that story across, it will be easier to tell, whether it's for print or television journalists, and it's easier for people to consume it as well. I was just thinking as an activist, how do you get your support during your campaign? We organize online a lot and then have a people that I work with that I've worked in the last five years. So I've been able to build their confidence to a level where I know that if you go out there and the cops come in, don't run away, they'll go to where the cops are.